So we want to edit this elevation to zero, but I don't want to lose that value, so I want to add it to the note. So how do we do that? We go in the points menu and we come down to the edit points um, selection and it opens the entire database of points as a spreadsheet. So the point that we were interested in was point number two and you can see the elevation is indeed 97. I want to zero that out. So I could go zero and then if I hit the enter key it should advance the cursor and when it gets to the end of a row it's going to come back to the left and drop down one row. But we want to edit this text now. Double click inside the field and I now want to transfer that elevation to my note so that I know uh, what it was or what it should be. And I've made similar edits to the other benchmarks already. This would also apply to any monumentation that you might shoot. And again, this is my methodology. So I shot the top of the rod and the elevation that the data collector had placed in this field was 123.01. So I zeroed out the elevation and I transferred that text, this is only text, to the note or the description field. And I did that throughout for all my benchmarks, all my monumentation, and I did happen to have some shed points that uh, I assigned a zero elevation because topography wasn't necessary. So we've made all the edits we want to make to the point file. You go under the file. You can choose to just save the points and continue to do some edits or you can save and exit at the same time and then of course if you've had second thoughts about what you've just done and you lost track of where you were you can just say let's exit without saving but in our case we're going to say save and exit and notice point two now has a zero elevation and the 97 is now part of the text and you'll notice if I had used that elevation in my topography it really would have messed some things up because in this particular case that PK spike was almost uh, let's say three feet three feet above the original grade so the contours would have done some really radical things around this point it wouldn't have been pretty so I zero out my benchmarks and my monumentation and I try to take a shot close to the uh, to the monument or benchmark to be used in my topography. Let's zoom out, zoom extents. There's another way to edit individual points and that is to double click on them. And it opens up a dialog that is specific just to that individual point. And you may find that um, this may be more convenient for you, uh, although when you first import a point file and you get it on the drawing, you generally will have, if you follow the same methodology that I do, you'll have a number of edits. And so it's more convenient to see all of them in that spreadsheet format so that you can edit them quickly. But if you prefer, you can do it individually. So we could have done exactly the same thing here. We could have zeroed out that Z elevation. And don't be confused by negative coordinates. They're all relative to um, a starting position 
within the drawing and the points can be plus or minus from that starting point. Don't be concerned about that. There's no need to even discuss it. Uh, do not change your point numbers unless you uh, intend to. Um, this will update the CRD file. So this is another method for editing point data. Okay, now that we're done with our simple edits, what are we going to do with our point data? Let's uh, zoom, zoom, extents. I personally like to uh, connect some of these dots, the edge of, edge of roads, uh, corner of buildings, and that sort of thing. Uh, so let's do that. I happen to know that in this area of the drawing I had three shots that represented uh, a shed. And there they are, right there. So let's draw a line connecting those four corners. Now if you have your snaps set, it should be relatively easy to snap to those points. And remember how to pan and zoom that wheel, zoom in, zoom out, and press and hold that wheel to pan. Okay, so there are the three corners of our shed, but we know obviously there are four. How do we draw the other two sides? Well, I'm going to introduce you to another command called offset. You'll use this quite routinely too if you want to draw lines parallel to one another. So let's invoke it. The shortcut is to type O at the command line for offset. It may be different in your version of AutoCAD. So let's see if we can't find it in the menu system. And it's under Edit, Offset. We want to choose the standard offset. And now we come back down to the command line and it's asking us to enter a distance and you have two options. When you make a line parallel to another line, you can either offset it at a specified distance or you can offset it through a point of your choosing. In this case we're trying to draw a line parallel to this wall but at the end of this line. So let's choose through. And all we have to do is type T because the T in through is capitalized so that's the hot key or the shortcut key. So T, enter. Now it says select the entity that we want to offset from. It's going to be that line and it's now asking us through what point. Come back to our drawing and I will get close to the end of that line and it, you'll notice the snap marker appears and there it is. So it created a line the same length and parallel through this corner of the shed. We want to finish this command and we want to do it again only this time we want to uh, offset from this corner or this side of the building and go to the end of that line. Now remember how to do the repeat command? Just press enter. It knows uh, to execute the last command that we used and once again we're going to use throw. So we're going to type T, enter, select the entity, and then move to the end or near the end of the line with your snaps, your object snaps on. And there we have the corner of our shed. Now the reason we only had three points is this was a one station job and those were the three corners that I could see from station one or from the only station in this case. And sometimes I'll forget where my station was. I know it was somewhere in this area, but where is it? Well, one 
quick way to discover where that point is and uh, it's point number one is to draw a line from point number one to any other point so that you can visually see quickly where is point number one so I select the line icon or you could have gone draw line and you'll notice at the command line it says pick point or give me the point number so I'm going to say point number one enter and then if we bring our crosshairs back into the drawing area we now have a rubber band that shows where point number one is and I'm just going to snap to the end of that that line or that corner but notice where's point number one clearly it knows where it is because it went to the coordinate file and it said it's right here but why isn't it showing on the screen well I may have inadvertently erased it and I did this on purpose uh, so that we could illustrate don't panic we're going to now go back and use one of the things that we talked about earlier we're going to go back to the points menu coordinate file utilities and we're going to say update the drawing from the CRD file so we want to select draw points from the CRD file that are not in the drawing we do not need to erase the points that are not in the CRD file although in our case it wouldn't have hurt if we did check it but let's leave that unchecked because we only want to draw that one point that we know is missing we'll say OK and it says it drew one point we'll exit and there it is but notice it brought it in at the size that it was originally the attributes are at their original predetermined size so if we care to we can go back to the points menu and we can select resize point attributes and at the command line we'll type again we want it to be 50 percent of its current size enter we're gonna say both the label and the point symbol enter and this time we're gonna just say number so we're gonna select N enter and we're gonna give it the point number one enter and it resized just that point point. 